Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Wednesday morning. Glad you're here. A lot to talk about and a lot on this show. First of all, is the American dream dead? We'll talk to our guest about that, a special guest here in the studio. And also, we'll talk about the vote last night that took place at People's Church. Fresno Unified Teachers overwhelmingly voted in favor of a strike. We'll have a call on that. One of the labor uh, union members, one of the chief negotiators for the teachers will join us live on the telephone. Connect with me starts right now. Okay, back here on the program on Wednesday morning here at Ventura TV. Of course, it is Connect With Me, and there is a lot to talk about, my friends. And you can call in at 436-MeTV, option 11. There is so much going on. Of course, the ongoing investigation into what, uh, you know, um, I think uh, spurred the, the uh, you know, the suspect that killed so many people in Las Vegas. What was the motivation behind the entire shooting? Uh, the girlfriend uh, flew back, and we'll kind of monitor that, maybe talk about that tomorrow with Doug Vagum and, and what has transpired, and certainly the heroes that uh, have emerged, uh, obviously, from this situation. People, the first responders, people that were at the concert on the scene saving lives. It certainly is a very interesting story. And one thing that we'll talk about tomorrow as well with Doug Vagum is this looming strike hanging over our heads at Fresno Unified, the fourth largest school district in the entire state of California. We'll have a call in today. We talked about that. For now, you're watching us live on Comcast Channel 375 as usual. Comcast Cable, it's Xfinity Television. If you don't have Comcast, if you don't have anything other than over-the-air broadcast, it's 43.6, 13.1 over-the-air with a television, uh, digital television outdoor antenna. Then the replay comes up at 2 in the afternoon, 13.6 YouTube, 8 tonight, 4.6 Biz TV. If you're not watching the Major League Baseball playoffs, or you can watch us on one set and have the baseball playoffs on the other. Of course, the Yankees won big 8-4 to four, uh, last night, and uh, they beat the Twins. And tonight, it will be Arizona and Colorado for that one-game playoff in the National League. For now, we're going to talk about the American dream that will kind of tie into the strike. Is the American dream dead? And I want to bring up this old soundbite of Donald Trump. He has, at the time of this, this speech that he gave, and it was, I don't think it was during a rally, but it was two years ago when he was deciding to run for president of the United States. Donald Trump was talking about the American dream being absolutely dead. We all thought to ourselves, well, maybe, is that true or not? Or is that just Donald Trump popping off as usual? Anyway, let's kind of take a trip back memory lane and listen to Donald Trump a couple of years ago as he announced his candidacy for the White House. Sadly, the American dream is dead. I am officially running for President of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. And some, I assume, are good people. I would do various things very quickly. I would repeal and replace the big lie Obamacare. Yeah. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me, and I'll build them very inexpensively. 
Well, not much has changed. The same old Donald Trump. We hear some of the same rhetoric today. Live in our studio is A.J. Rasomni. He is the owner of Great American Car Wash. He is also an author. He's written many books, and he has the latest book here sitting on our desk. We'll talk about that. And is the American dream dead? As we sit here and talk about a possible strike, Fresno Unified Teachers Association voting last night. Is that part of the American dream? Is being able to work and then having your right to strike? I don't know. Call in. Weigh in. Back in just a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. So, my friends, you go to work 9 to 5, you take a vacation, uh, you take the kids to school each and every day, and you have health benefits, or do you? Um, or, you know, are you working part-time? What's the situation with you? Is the American dream dead? Are you, are you able to buy a home? Do you have enough money to buy a home? Do you have a, a, enough money for a vacation to buy a car? That's part of the American dream. I remember that growing up. It was like getting married, having two kids, having the old picket fence, having the job. Uh, you buy a car. That's part of the American dream. A.J. Rasomni is here now. We're talking about the American dream. Donald Trump said it over and over and over again during the campaign. That was one of the first times he, he, he actually bleeped out the words, the American dream is dead. Is it dead or alive? It is different. So it's the, not dead. It's not dead, but it is different. So the, the way you lived the American dream in the past is different than the way you lived the American dream today. So since the 1920s, every, United, every president of the United States had said the American dream is pursuit of material benefits, which is like you said. So what, yeah, but what is the American dream? Is it material? Is it uh, um, spiritual satisfaction? What, what, what's the American dream? What's more important? Perfect. It is both. It is the material, but it is the spiritual. It is giving back. Uh -huh. So you need to feel fulfillment when you give back. You need to have a purpose in life. It's why do you get up every morning? Do you get up, just go to work nine to five and pay your bills? Now, what are you doing it for? Or to make a difference? What are you doing it for? What are you getting up, uh, going to work nine to five for? What are you getting up early in the morning and you know, having that cup of coffee, reading the paper, maybe getting on the treadmill? Uh, why are we doing all of that? For what purpose? To support our families, right? Yes, I mean, we have to work. If we want, if we decide what kind of what kind of life we want to live, yes, we need to work. We need to produce. But is it really the American dream to go to work every day, nine to five, and by age seventy, seventy percent, seventy percent of Americans by age seventy are still working? because they cannot afford to survive anymore. Yeah, but that wasn't the case years ago. It wasn't. So Since, why has okay. that changed now? Um, let me give you a couple of stories first. Greedy business owners? Yes. Okay, it's go called ahead. irresponsible capitalism. That's what I call it. Okay, go ahead, okay. explain. Since 1940, in 1940, a, a manager at a store was making an average of $12,000 a year. Okay. And a house cost $9,000. So one year salary, that manager could buy a house and pay it off. Today, uh, the average manager uh, makes $55,000. That's 450% increase from 40 years ago. But the average house went up from $9,000 in California, from $9,000 to $450,000. That's 4,900% increase. So you can do the math. F uh, 50, 450% increase in, in, uh, in salary and 4,900% increase in cost of living in house. So, so, so the American dream became a lot harder. So imagine today, 
today, with your income you're making today, if your if your purchasing power is ten times more. Mm -hmm. This used to be in the 1950s and 1940s. Right. So what killed it is the inflation. Mm -hmm. The inflation went up 10 times higher than the seller wages went up. Right. So, so actually since 1970, since we went off the gold standard, uh, the average worker in the United States did not get a significant increase in, in, in living wages. Now you're talking about labor in this country has taken the short end of the stick and uh, uh, you know a manager today at a grocery store making forty nine fifty thousand dollars is not able to outright purchase that home in one, on one year's salary. Yes. He's got in order to pay that house off if he wanted to uh, would probably take him 30, 40 years. 30 years I guess it would if that's the average. 15, if you get a 15 year loan yeah. or a 30. Uh, 30 years to pay off a house that cost $450,000 if he can afford the payments, if he doesn't have any other overhead. Yes. So if you look at the past 30, 40 years, um, in America, we used to have one household income. Then in the six, up to the 60s, we had one household income. In the 70s, the spouse has to go and work for them to keep the same uh, level of uh, living, to, to keep on living the same way they had to have two house household uh, income. In the 1980s, when uh, the two house income was not enough, they started introducing the credit cards. So, so people start living on the credit cards. And today, if you look at the big companies when they're selling stuff, they want you to buy because they want to make their billions of dollars a year. So they say, oh, easy financing, we'll finance for you. So, so two house income is not enough, credit card is not enough, and now they're financing for us. But you mentioned inflation, so why did inflation take over all of our lives? How did that happen? Okay, if you, that's a long story. It started in 1913 when the Federal Reserve was created. Uh, and, and the name is misleading, Federal Reserve, because it has nothing to do with the government. It's a separate entity. It's owned by the bankers. As a matter of fact, Multiple times, many times, even after the recent recession that we had, 2008, the Congress wanted uh, to investigate, and they are not allowed to investigate the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. It's a separate entity, and nobody can see what they're doing inside of the coming up with decisions. So what is the, what's, the, what's the Federal Bank? What are they doing? Well, the Federal Bank, if you listen to them, uh, the first What did they do to cause this inflation? Okay. <clears throat> If you listen to the Federal Bank, they say 2% uh, inflation every year is good for you. It's good for the economy. But the question is good for whom? It's good only for the 1%, the riches of the rich. Because when, when inflation happens, money is created from air. So that's not making more money. But, but the average worker, the middle class, if you look from 1960s to today. So doesn't inflation mean that you're living off, off of, uh, you call it air, <clears throat> but you're living off credit, basically is what you're doing, aren't you? You're, you're printing more money, yes. you're living off credit, Yes. and the value of the dollar is decreasing. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. The Federal Reserve, when they create uh, inflation, uh, it's, it's for them to make more money and to put us into debt. How do you pay, uh, how do you pay the debt back to the Federal Reserve? Right. So they it's, do it's, that it's, by it's, charging these high interest rates. And that does that create or cause inflation? It does. And not only that, if you look, 1913 is when the federal personal income taxes started. The federal income tax started the same year that the Federal Reserve started. And it was created only to pay back the debts. Can you get by in this day and age by living and turning the clock back, living like we used to back in the 1960s with no credit cards? Is it possible? I mean, without credit, you can't even buy a house. You can't buy a car. You can't go to Macy's and buy a suit, for God's sake, uh, without credit. If, 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 you, if you don't have something on the books, they okay. need something to trace your credit. Am I right? So can we actually go back to living the way we did in the 60s? If you talk to Americans, there's a lot of people, a lot of Americans today do not use credit cards because they understand that credit cards is only made to make other people rich. You need to learn as an American to, to live the American dream. You need to learn how to pay yourself first. So whenever you get your check, decide to take 20%. I always say normally 30%. Take 30%, 20%. 
put it on the side that it not, doesn't exist and then spend the rest of the money that you want. But we are trained to every year to go buy a new phone, buy a new computer, buy a car every couple of years, change a house every five years. Why? To keep the economy rolling because today the economy, the dollar strength depends on the economy. Because we have no longer... So the, don't uh, purchase that house every five years if you don't exactly. need it. Exactly. If you don't need it because... Exactly. Who is most imp more important? Is it the Fortune 500 companies? Is it, is it the government? Is it you and your family? Mm -hmm. So learn to pay yourself first. Whatever money you make, take 20, 30 percent. Again, I say I always recommend 30 percent. Put it on the side. And all what you have to do that well, for is 10 years. But there are a lot of people that are barely making it, AJ. They're barely cutting it. They're barely getting by with food, with uh, bills. Uh, you've got utilities. You've got maybe got a car payment. What if you don't have 20 or 30 percent to put aside? What you know, if you don't have okay. it? You don't have to buy, let's say you, you make less than $30,000. I mean, uh, you don't have to buy a $5,000 car, buy a $3,000 car. You don't have to I'm go buy. I'm just saying if you don't, on a monthly basis, if you don't have money to put away, 20 or 30%, okay. where's that money going to come then, from? I do have a, I do have a call here. Let, let's, uh, let's take this real quick. I'll let you answer that in a moment. I didn't mean to cut you off, but let's take this real quick here. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air uh, talking to A.J. Rasomni. Hi, uh, John and AJ. I was wondering if uh, either of you have heard of the book called The Creature from Jekyll Island? No, I haven't. Have you? No. Go ahead. Tell us what the book is about. That is about uh, just uh, what he was talking about, the Federal Reserve created in uh, 1913 and how they basically took over. Uh, it's a book that's gone through several editions. Uh, I think the uh, fifth edition is out right now. The Creature but, uh, from, from what's the name of the book again? The Creature from Jekyll Island. From Jekyll Island, okay. Yes, and uh, yeah, it's about the creation of the uh, Federal Reserve Bank. And just, the, just everything that he was just talking about, it's, uh, it's a very interesting book. And if you get a chance, that's a, a book you should read. Um, basically, uh, it talks about how the federal government has superseded the United States government. I mean, when you when you think about it, the federal government is the one who makes the decisions. The uh, United States government that wants to pass a law. The federal government doesn't want to spend any money to, uh, you know, uh, sponsor this law. Mm -hmm. You know, the law won't pass. Yeah, yeah. Do you own any uh, credit cards? Me? No, you don't I don't have a credit I, card. I don't have a credit card. How do you get by if you want to rent a car? Let's say you want a trip, you want to rent a car. I'm actually living from check to check right now, and okay, so for, I yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I I live from check to check right now, and I I don't use credit at all. I just uh, have a debit card, and I pay everything uh, in with that so you're one of the ones uh, uh, you just heard aj say that it's good to take 20 30 percent of your salary every month and sock it away like you don't even it you don't even have it like it doesn't exist are you able to do that or not uh, i'm not able to do that because my my checks are so small like like the saying goes everything's going up except my paycheck so what do you do for a living if you don't mind me asking i work in retail uh, can you further explain? Well, I just I work in retail and I uh, work in, in a dairy. Uh huh. So, and that's all. And I just I get paid bi-weekly. So you have you have one job or two? Just one. Okay. All right. How old are you, sir? Forty years old. Okay. So you got a ways to go before retirement. Let's hope Social Security is there by the time you get to be sixty-two or whatever. Uh, stay on the line there. Do you have a question for him, AJ? Well, uh, I, I'm going to answer the question before okay. the caller got online. It's basically, if you cannot put 30% on the side, you cannot put 20% on the side, put 10% on the side. If you cannot put 10%, put 5% on the side. But you need to whatever start. Whatever you can. Whatever you can, but you need to start. You need to start putting money on the side today because all what it takes, if you're able to put uh, money on the side, it takes about 10 years to have enough money 
for you to purchase something that can create income for you or purchase a house. But, but that money is only put on the side to buy something that's going to benefit you to live your American dream. Don't use that money to go buy a car because car is not an investment. Can I ask you something? Uh, you yeah, know, there's a lot ahead. of retired. There's a lot of retired people who uh, who who had a job and they, when they reti- uh, reached retirement age, retired, but then they still have to work to to pay yes. off a, a rent and stuff that they they need. How Seven, did that happen? Seventy percent of Americans that reach retirement age still have to work and are still living from paycheck to paycheck. Wow. And, and that has to do with inflation? It has to do mainly with inflation. Uh, it has a lot of things to do about mainly inflation, Federal Reserve, and, and lobbyists in the Congress. It should be illegal for lobbyists to, to lobby the federal government. Because, because That's never going to happen. Because today... Uh, Elected uh, uh, officials are no longer elected by the people for the people. They're elected by the lobbyists for the lobbyists. It, it's about their company and their best interest. How can we make the billions of dollars on the account of the middle class people and the low income people? Right, right. Okay. Caller, you still uh, there? Go ahead. Yeah. Like I'm saying, so, so I am I correct in saying that? The federal government is really the uh, is really the the power here in our country, and not the United States government. Am I correct in assuming that? Well, I mean, it's it's I don't know what's the difference. It's basically the same. It's the federal government. It's the Congress. Well, maybe you're talking. Maybe he's talking about the federal bank, which is not uh, the U.S. Okay, government. Okay, 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 okay. There's a difference there. Yes, yes. So uh, you know, from 1970s is. Uh, with Nixon, sir, but it amplified with uh, with Reagan. It's where we start uh, the true capitalism, where where everything is privatized, uh, and and we we took every restrictions off uh, to give to give the freedom to bankers and investors to do whatever they want. For example, uh, we had uh, the Glass Steagall Act. The Glass Steagall Act. Uh, when Reagan came to the office by Reagan, it's not on Reagan, really. It's Reagan, it's uh, Clinton, and it's uh, Bush Sr. But it's not really from Nixon. Uh, and, and the common denominator between them all is Greenspan, by the way. So they privatized everything. They removed Glass-Steagall. What Glass-Steagall did, it, uh, it's, it prohibited banks from doing investments. Mm-hmm. So for, for 50 years that we had Glass-Steagall in act, we did not have a, a recession. Yeah. We did not have a recession. In the eight, 70s or late 70s, early 80s, when we started dismantling it, is we had three uh, stock, uh, three times that the stock crashed because of that. All right, caller, we got to take a break, but go ahead. I'll give you the final word before we go to a commercial break. Uh, go ahead. Uh, well, I, like I said, uh, if anyone gets a chance, if uh, both of you get a chance, uh, right. read the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Will do. Will do. And I, you know, caller, I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for that tip. Uh, I'll have to get that book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. A.J. Rasomni is here. And on the other, other side of the break, we're going to talk to the chief negotiator for the union on the teacher's side. They voted the strike last night. We'll kind of tie all this in. 436, Me TV Option 11. Back in just a moment. Frigidaire. It means the first electric refrigerator. The first compact electric range. Now, there's the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. 
When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the KitchenAid appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Save big with KitchenAid. Right now, get up to a $1,000 prepaid MasterCard when you purchase select KitchenAid appliances. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Back here on the program, connect with me on MeTV Fresno. As mentioned at the top of the program here, um, you know, the teachers at Fresno Unified, and there were plenty of them, a lot of teachers, the fourth largest district in the state of California, they decided to vote. There was a vote last night, took place at People's Church. You know, you might remember on September the 20th, just a couple of weeks ago, we had the two chief negotiators for the teachers on this program debating. Now, I want to preface this by saying, because we had a call come in that day, about Bob Nelson, the now permanent superintendent at Fresno Unified, whether or not we were going to get him in on the program. Yes, I'm working on that now. I'm actually working with Jessica Pettis. She is the public information officer for Fresno Unified to try to get Bob Nelson on. I wanted Bob on this week. Uh, it didn't work out. So uh, working on possibly getting him next week. On the telephone right now with us is John Bath. He was a guest uh, with us a couple of weeks ago. He's the chief negotiator or one of them for the Fresno teachers. John, are you there? And welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. And thanks for having us on your program um, a week or two ago. We appreciate it. And I hope you do get Bob. He's a, he's a good man. And I know he's trying to do his best. It's just a different viewpoint. Um, the teachers are looking from the bottom up and the boots on the ground up. And he is still approaching this from a top down perspective. And hopefully we will avoid a strike and uh, we'll find a way to get through this. Um, we're looking at some video here of the teachers rally that took place at Fresno Unified uh, School District uh, headquarters here not, not, not all that long ago. But um, uh, let me ask you a question about how the count was last night. The teachers, so we had, the sure. teachers voted, but was it a formal vote? Was it secret or yes, was sir. it? It was. No, no, no here, let me explain. Okay. So, so I'm also uh, a delegate for the California Teachers Association, and I've also been a delegate for the National Education Association. So the, the GTA, we meet with 3,000 or more teachers in L.A. In fact, we're going later this month. For the EEA, there was 15,000 of, of us in Boston. We follow the rules of order procedures with those large meetings. We do voice vote. We do standing vote. That's how we do it. If it gets close, you, there's a the procedures you to follow. However, last night we ended up doing standing vote and it was over 99%. We, we don't have a final count, but 2,500 or more teachers somewhere around there um, showed up and 99. probably 9%. I think there were 13 against something like that um, voted to to strike if um, we do not get this issue resolved with Fresno Unified. Okay, just to clarify, John Bath, uh, one of the chief negotiators for the Fresno Teachers Association, is on the telephone last night, a big vote. So, John, you say that the 24 to 2,500 teachers voted in favor of a strike. Only 13 voted against, and that was a standing vote. There was, there was, no, there was no secret ballot, in other words. It's a standing vote. Again, yeah. again it's a democratic process that is used by our organization. Okay. I offered to do this for big decisions with over 15,000 members it was recently as this summer. Um, you know, I have no problem with people who wanted to vote against it. I encourage everybody to come and take their vote. Um, this, is, this is how you do it when you have that many people because it was a fluid situation. We had to explain the last proposal from Fresno Unified. We had to explain our last proposal. Um, and we have to put in, go, go to the campus just to find out how they feel about Fresno Unified unwilling to do anything about class size reduction for grades 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. They're offering a plan now to affect only some 7th through 12th grade classes, but not all. And we're finding so many excuses that they want to offer on the 458th day of negotiations. Uh, teachers have had enough. Um, we, we, should have, we shouldn't have been waiting this long to actually begin talks with Fresno Unified. We're, we're sick of it. I was talking to Brooke Ashton, I think, yesterday or the day before. As you know, he's the uh, chair of the board at uh, Fresno Unified School District. Uh, and uh, he was saying that, listen, um, we offered the teachers on the health benefits, we offered them 90-10. Um, 
It was 80-20. Now it's 90-10. Is that true? Did they offer you that? 90-10, 70-30, 60-40, 50-50. What does it really matter? Those numbers actually don't matter okay. because there's some other things on there. So if you're looking at health care, sure, you'd want 100% plan. Fresno Unif um, Clovis Unified is a 100% plan. Most school districts in the Valley actually still have 100% plans where you, where you pay it. It doesn't mean you don't pay anything. It means you pay premiums, you pay co-pays, et cetera. Fresno Unified currently has an 80-20 plan, which is still pretty decent. But, you know, when I take my child to the hospital, something tragic happens, I pay 20% of a $10,000 bill. That's $2,000. So it can still be quite a lot. So moving to 90-10 is a good move. The problem is in the details. We've told Fresno Unified over and over, they need to promise that other things won't go up because they've done this to us in the past. So, so they say they go to a 90-10, but they take our premiums from $30 to $25, and they take them up to 200 That's not going to help teachers. But, you know, this thing is not about health benefits, and they know that. They're turning this issue because that sells with the community. Oh, look at the health benefits. This is mostly the issue we are focused right now on closing its class size and what prefers unified to recruit teachers. They have lowered the standards. They just passed a, a motion a month ago to hire more teachers without credentials. All right, so most of this is about class size and about hiring more teachers, recruiting. It's the fourth largest district, as exactly. you know. You exactly. Have, you, have, you have in some classes 30 kids, some classes 35, 30. some classes 37 or yeah. 40. So oh, you want to definitely. reduce that class size. That's the most important thing right now? Yes. That, this is the issue that we've been trying to talk about, and Fresno Unified refused. They wouldn't talk about it in January, February, March, April, May, June. This went for over a year. Finally, on the 458th day, they ran out their proposal. This was four days ago, or six days ago, right before our strike. They finally ran out their proposal. But there's this empty because it doesn't cover enough classes. It does nothing for fourth grade, sixth grade or most of the classes, 7th grade, 8th grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, it's not affecting most kids in Fresno Unified. We want to see big change in this district, and the money is there. They just need to have mm -hmm. the will to make the change. Uh, Lastly, on the, on the class size thing, let me add something. Fresno Unified is trying to say, oh, well, we might not have enough room or have enough teachers. We didn't structure it that way. We structure it there's incentives for the teacher, for the district to do the right thing. If they can't get the numbers down, there's a small financial incentive for them to do it right. That's what most districts do. We're not going to shut any student out anywhere or make any student move from any classroom or any school to any other school. That's not what we're talking about. All right. This will probably be my final question. We'll let you go. We know that you're teaching and uh, you're a teacher at Sunnyside. We appreciate you taking the time. But I, I want to read to you, John, and to our viewers at home. Uh, Jessica um, Perez uh, Baird, she is the public information officer at Fresno Unified, or one of uh, one of a few over there. She sent me an email this morning, and I want to want to read to you what the email says. It says, "Now that the strike vote has taken place, state law requires Fresno Unified and the FTA to continue bargaining into the next phase of fact finding. In fact finding, each side presents evidence to a state appointed appointed bargaining panel." The date for such a hearing is still yet to be scheduled. Once the hearing occurs, the chair of the bargaining panel then prepares settlement recommendations, which could take up to three to four weeks. Do you agree with that? Is that how it's going to go down? Or can you walk out uh, now? No, no. It, that's mostly accurate. Um, we are going to go see that fact-finding panel. There's nothing in there that says we have to meet with them between now and then, but of course we'll meet with them. We've told them over and over, we'll meet with you anywhere, anytime, any day. In fact, they finally met with us on a Saturday after they canceled meeting after meeting, wouldn't meet with us all summer. So now they want to meet with us finally, so that's great. We'll keep meeting with them up until this panel. After that report comes out, then after that report comes out, legally we have a right to go on strike, and that, that's kind of exactly how it works. So that is accurate, and it could be a month away. It could be 40 days away. We just don't know exactly, but we don't want to strike. We want Fresno Unified to start talking to us, which they finally started doing, and let's avoid this thing. Let's, let's actually listen to what the educators say they need in the classrooms and not what people downtown say they need. Last thing, Jessica Perez used to be a reporter for Channel 30, I believe. They have a $2.4 million dollar communications team down there, the biggest in the state outside of Los Angeles Unified, and they're constantly running reports to everywhere. In fact, I was on KMJ 580, and the guy was confused because of all the misinformation put out by Fresno Unified. They need to run this thing straight and stop using taxpayer dollars to confuse the public. Right. And, and just one final, I just want to clarify, by state law, 
you have to both sides have to come to uh to a meeting uh, they have to sit across the table and try to negotiate is that state law now it's, after the strike no, vote? yes well it's a panel so we present they present the panel writes up a report okay first first unified at that point can consider the report not consider the report and then out and so so can we after that report comes out we can take their best offer or we can we can strike it's our decision at that point we don't have to do anything once that report comes out we can strike the next day if we wanted we certainly wouldn't do that. We would try to talk with President Unified right. and try to still try to work it out. All right, just to calm the fears out there, people watching this program and listening to your interview right no. now, uh, they, 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 you know, people are probably asking the question: Can What's the teachers can the teachers walk out right now at this moment, or would that be illegal? We have never said we would walk out right at this moment. So anybody talking about that was giving out misinformation. We have okay. consistently said we will follow all the rules. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, just talking from a, I'm just talking from a legal standpoint, that's all. No, of course not. We've never said we would. We will always follow all the procedures, and we would also never put our teachers in risk to do that. Right. Okay. Listen, John, uh, thank you for your time, and obviously no obviously, we wish you good luck in uh, negotiations uh, in the yeah, next uh, few I, weeks. Yeah, and I hope you get Bob on your program. I think it would be most beneficial to have Bob and maybe myself or someone else speaking with him, but um, I do hope you get Bob at any rate. He, he's a good man, and I think we can hopefully figure this out. All right. You're a good man, too. I appreciate you taking the time from Sunnyside High School. Good luck, John. I appreciate your right. time. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks. Have a good day. That's John Bath, one of the chief negotiators for the Fresno Teachers uh, Association. And, of course, last night they voted uh, in favor of a strike. The vote count was 24 to 2,500. It was a standing vote. By all tallies, there were only 13 that voted against a strike. And uh, by law, now the two sides have to come together to at least try to negotiate a deal. And if that doesn't work out, we'll see what happens uh, after that. But John Bath, thank you very much. He was a guest on this program just a couple of weeks ago. We'll see if we can get Bob Nelson on. I'm still working on that. In the meantime, uh, we have an incoming call here, and we'll uh, actually take it here real quick. Okay, caller, um, I'm going to have to put you on hold, take a break, and we'll come back with more of A.J. Rasomny's interview in just a moment. You're watching Connect With Me. The following is another list of things you will not hear on MeTV programs. Man Cave, Baby Bump, Whatevs, Double Half Calf Mochaccino, Full Hawk, Redonculus, Totes Adorbs, Hella, Hala, YOLO, Cray Cray, and MeTV is still Kardashian free. This is what you will hear on MeTV programs. Welcome, Denim. The Twilight Zone. About bulls. I object, Your Honor. Mr. Grant. <laughs> I hear you right. You heard me right. Me TV. Thanks for listening. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Back here on our program, A.J. Rasomny is here. An interesting conversation um, because you're a local businessman. Um, you're an entrepreneur. You've written several books. You're an author. Um, you're also on the board at uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters, and they recently had their 300 Club uh, Hall of Fame uh, dinner not too long ago, right? Just a few days ago? Last Thursday. Last Thursday, and you were, you were, you were in attendance, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. So, so as a private business owner, um, and you're looking at this whole thing on the outside, and we do have a call waiting. I will get to you, caller, and get your opinion about this, but how do you view this as an outsider? I mean, I'm an outsider. I, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my brain around, you know, there hasn't been a strike since 1979. Um, there are some people that say, look, you can't strike. I mean, you're, 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 you are teaching the future of our country. These kids are going to be yes. running our country in the next 40, yes, yes, 50 yes. years. How can you just walk out? But there's the flip side of that. There are always two sides to yeah. a story. So they want smaller class size. They want better pay, better benefits. They want to be able to recruit more teachers. They aren't able to recruit because of the working conditions here. They claim, how do you view all, how do you wrap your brain around all this? You know, uh, students today in the United States are 17% of the population. But everybody agrees. Around the country? Around the country. Okay. But everybody agrees they're 100% of our future. 
Oh, of course. Okay. But so for me, the strike should be about something more important. It should be about the kids. It should be about changing the education system that we have. Because right. the education system we have today is teaching students to become robots. Is that the most important job in yes. America? Teachers because hold the most important job, would you say, more important than what you do or I do or any of us do? Teachers are more important than, they're at the top of the list? Uh, you know, for me, at the top of the list is always teachers, uh, police, and fire departments. Because okay. without those three, really, we cannot have the okay. American. So that police, we know. teachers, and fire department. Of course, of course. But, but on top of all of these are the kids mm. and actually the students. Yeah. Uh, so United States, what made United States the greatest country in the whole world is the innovation that we have. But yet we are teaching these kids to become robots. We are taking the creativity out of everything. How are we teaching them to become robots? Perfect. Uh, so what do I don't we know do? What that means. Let, let me give you an example. Okay. So uh, so for example, if you have two students and I say spell the word cat, and one person, one student spells it said C A T, they get A. The other person, the other kid spells it K A T. Kit it Kat. is K A T K A T. <laughs> it, it is wrong, but but, but, bar, but right? it is creativity yeah. because if you look in the dictionary, they spell the cat K A T. Yeah. Okay. So let me say let's let's say for example, uh, you have uh, so that K A T gets zero, gets an F. Yeah. Doesn't get anything for creativity. Okay. So let's say uh, somebody's being interviewed. Okay, and they, they ask him, uh, how tall is that building? And he says, you know, I know exactly how tall it is because I'm starting to become an engineer. It's 110 feet tall. The other person being interviewed, uh, ask him how tall is that building? Said, you know, I have no idea. But I know that this building is 10, 10 floor high. Every, every uh, floor is uh, nine feet, you know, between wall yeah. to wall, nine yeah. feet. There's maybe one foot between uh, for the floor. Uh, there's five feet extra on the top. And there's five feet maybe to climb the stairs. That's 109. It's 109. It's wrong answer. But who would you hire? The person that knows the answer, memorized it, or the person who was creative enough to come up with the answer? Well, I know, but that's the way education has always been. It's always been rigid that way ever since okay. I was a kid. In the United States. But why don't you look at Europe? Why don't you look at Finland? It's changed. And, you know, let, let's put it this way. How, what is, kind of how is Europe and Finland different from, from, from okay. us? Let me give this, uh, ask you this first. How, what kind of phones did we have 100 years ago? Remember the phones? And what kind of phones we have today? What kind of cars we have 100 years ago? What kind of cars we have today? Over 100 years ago, before 1900, we couldn't fly. Today we fly. But the school is still the same. We're teaching the kids the same way we, we did 100 years ago. We're still teaching them today, so over 150 years ago. So do you agree with the strike or not? Well, for me, I'm a humanist. And a, You mean a realist? A realist and a humanist, too. Uh, it's, it should be more first about the kids. And uh, yes, the teachers should get paid more. And I think the upper management making all the money and the money is not trickling down because everybody is all about me, 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 me. But yeah. for me, what's more important are the kids because they are the future of this country. All right, caller, you've been patient. Go ahead, you're on with AJ. What's your, uh, what's your comment about uh, what's going on today? We're talking about- uh, AJ, you, you put the police officers on, uh, on top of the list, but this is the way I see it. Without the teachers, teaching these young kids in the future, they, they won't become police officers because they like it or whatever. But at the same time, the only way the teachers, uh, you know, I, I, I'm with the teachers, you know. I'm a parent. Mm -hmm. uh, and if, if the teachers don't get enough, whatever they want, I don't mean to say, hey, we're going to go on strike because, you know, this, this, and that. They're not thinking about the strike. They, the last part is things that they want is to go on strike. Because they feel bad for the kids. They're not worried about, you know, this, this, and that. If they can get it fine. Their main concern is the future of these kids. These young kids that, that are bright, they won't have uh, too much of a problem. But the ones in between and the ones who are really struggling, they're going to be shuffled in, the, in, in, in different groups, and they're going to become, you know, uh, maybe not the, the best uh, uh, adults uh, in the future, but at the same time, the teachers are, are parents. 
you know, the teachers, uh, I mean, they're, they're basically uh, the parents uh, of these kids, and, and they look up to the, the teachers for everything. Uh, you know, where do the teachers get their equipment, their supplies and whatnot? Teachers have to buy their own things. But, uh, you know, they're not making enough money as it is. I, I like your philosophy about, I mean, let's go back here, uh, about saving. Now, my the kids, when they were younger, I, I think, you know, we, we weren't rich or, you know, middle class. But I always uh, stress on the kids, okay, when they get a job, I want you to put $50 every paycheck. Put it aside so when you get older, you're going to have something you know, to fall on. You can buy. But don't go buy a uh, $400,000 uh, house because uh, you keep up with the Joneses or a brand-new Mercedes for a car. You, 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 you forget that. Get what you can afford, okay? And, and I like his philosophy because my kids, uh, you know, like to say, we're not the richest, but they don't have to struggle. By yeah. putting, have putting uh, fifty dollars a, 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 on a paycheck, and it's been like ten years, and they've been putting in all that saving, and that's a great idea what he has. You know, the ones who have good jobs and all that, I, I bet you they can put a hundred dollars, you know, a paycheck. But you know, yeah. it's, it's a philosophy, it's a mentality okay. all right, of, of the parents. I Thank you very much. Well, you know, it's not here. Here's what it seems to me. Uh, it seems to me that maybe uh, I'm going to make a couple of points here that the teachers now feel that the American dream is slipping away from them um, and life is becoming harder. Uh, I know John has talked about that when he was on the program here. John Bath, the guy that was just on the phone, the teacher from Sunnyside. And, and the second part of that. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It matters how you manage it. Because we did a show last week uh, talking about the NFL players uh, uh, taking a knee uh, during the national anthem. And 60 to 65% of NFL players who, within five years after retiring, go broke. Yes. And here are players that are making millions upon yes. millions of dollars. Yes, yes, yes. So maybe it's not how much you make, but how you manage it. It's how you manage your money. But, but again, the economy, the, the government, the media, the companies in the United States, the train, the brainwash people is spend all the money you have. And spend all your money you have. Why? To keep the economy running and for them to make billions of dollars. So all what I'm saying is people have to learn to pay themselves first. And once they pay themselves for it, I am more important than that billion dollar company. So my family is more important than that company. So learn to pay yourself first. Don't let, do not listen to that media. Do not be brainwashed by that media. But you, you are will more have some people say, look, I am paying myself and I am making myself happy. I'm making my heart inside happy. Uh, and satisfied. I feel satisfied and relieved that I have a credit card and I can go down and buy anything I want. Okay. With a $10,000 credit. I, I'm not that saying. That makes me happy. But hold on. I'm not saying not to have a credit card. Have a credit card and use it. But pay it Hang off. On, caller. Pay it off every month. Okay. Do not depend on that credit card. All right. Got to go to break. Caller, hang on. We'll get you after the break. 436 Me TV, option 11. Back in a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the KitchenAid appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Save big with KitchenAid. Right now, get up to a $1,000 prepaid MasterCard when you purchase select KitchenAid appliances. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Interesting conversation today, in case you missed it, the Fresno Teachers Association deciding to strike. It was a standing vote. 2,400 to 2,500 said, yes, let's walk out. Only 13, count of 13 teachers said, no, I don't think so. Caller, you've been patient. Uh, you're on the air with A.J. Rasomni, uh, talking about the American dream, talking about teachers, talking about saving money, talking about the Federal Reserve. 
Uh, go ahead. Yeah, we. You know, uh, I'm I'm a president of one of the PTAs here with the elementary schools here in Fresno Unified, and we have we have uh, reached out to all the other PTAs, uh, the other 56 PTA, elementary school PTAs, and the seven PTAs at the high schools, and we've come together and we've talked, and they've talked to their membership, and and should the strike happen, uh, our memberships of the PTAs in Fresno Unified, we're going to strike as well in terms of, you know, we're not going to allow our kids to be taught by substandard teachers, you know, substitutes. We're going to just have our, our, our students stay home, our kids stay home. The, the school district won't get the ADA for those kids. And, you know, and we're kind of, you know, and we're going to show them that, you know, we're, we're upset too that, uh, that, that, that uh, you know, the class sizes, you know, I mean, I got a child who's in, who in 40 plus class sizes in high school, and that's ridiculous. And so, you know, parents like myself and our PTA members across the district, we're, we're upset too, and, um, and we plan to strike with our kids as well. And uh, the, the district wants to pay $500 to a substitute to, to take their place, then they're going to hurt to do that, and we're going to let them know that too. And they may not know it right now because we haven't, we don't, we don't tell the district what we're going to do. But that's our plan as, as PTAs in, in Fresno Unified. Okay. All right, caller. Thank you very much. Uh, Four three six Me TV Option Eleven. Still have roughly eight or nine minutes. Uh, to call in 436 Me TV Option 11. So yeah, I mean, he here's the thing: uh, the teachers uh, are saying, "Look, uh, you got two million bucks a day to pay these subs that are going to come in if we strike. Why not take part of that money and give us what we need?" You know, they're absolutely right. I'm not saying they are not. I think there's money, and I think the bureaucracy is taking most of the money itself trickling down. So teachers have to make more money. But what I'm saying is. We need to change the school system to, to, to create, to have creativity in the school because, again, we have 17% students today in, in, in the nation, but they're 100% of our future. So we need to take over the students too. So I'm not saying they don't have a cause, they should get paid more and there's money there, but I'm saying let's change the school system. You want to change the school system, but that, I mean, that's, you're talking about, I mean, AJ, you know this. You're talking about changing the, the curriculum. You're changing you're talking, curriculums. You're talking about, I mean, that takes, that takes state legislation. It takes the lawmakers up in Sacramento, both houses, the Senate, the Assembly, then signed by the governor. The education code, I understand, is like, yeah. uh, you know, this tall. Um, so how are you going to convince anyone to do that? That's going to take money to do that. You know what now you have to reprint all these books. You're talking about a major change across the landscape. But, but, but it, it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, but you know what it takes? It takes first person to start talking about it. But what it takes is to add certain classes to teach creativity, to add, uh, to add, to add classes to show them how they can save money, how they become entrepreneurs. You know, all what we're doing today for our kids uh, in school and outside of school, uh, we are teaching them entitlement. Mm -hmm. For example... Uh, if We're teaching our kids entitlement. Entitlement that they deserve everything. Everything's going to be given to them. But when they grow up and go to, to work, they'd be shocked because that's not the word the, the word that it should be, that that the word used to. So, for example, I give you an example. Uh, when kids go to summer camp and they play football or soccer, whatever game they play, at the end of the season, everybody gets a trophy: the winners and the losers. So, what are you teaching the losers? You don't have to work hard because we're going to give it to you. But what are you teaching? What are you telling the, the kids, the team that won everything? Why? They're, they're learning. It's why should I work hard? I'm going to get the trophy regardless if I work hard or not. Yeah. All right. About five minutes left here on the program. 436, Me TV Option 11. A lot of people are going to disagree with you on that. <laughs> you know that because it's not politically correct now in this day and age. Back in my day, yeah, if you won, you got a trophy. Second place. Sorry, you get nothing. Go home. You lost. But that is a scientifically proven today. That but you've had what people did say that psychologically it's bad for uh, 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 especially someone who's you know a child that's four or five years old uh, to, to send him home with nothing. It's better to be shocked at age five than to be shocked at age 18 when they have to, to face the, whole, the new world because they have the rest of their life to live. Right. So if we don't train them properly, if we don't educate them properly at the beginning, what's going to happen in the future? Life is tough, and they need to understand that life is tough. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so um, big brothers, big sisters, just touch on that. I only got about four minutes left now. So 
So um, you had this 300 Club. Explain what that 300 Club uh, is, what that dinner is. That, that well, uh, Big Brothers Big Sister is uh, an organization that what we do, we mentor kids one-on-one. Uh, -on -one, right. So we get right. a lot of volunteers. But the dinner and, is about we match them. The dinner is about raising funds for, for Big Brothers Big Sister so we can operate. Okay. Uh, so what we just did recently, uh, we've been working on it since last year. If you remember last year at my car wash, we had an event called We Are In This Together. And okay. we brought the community together because there were problems between community law enforcement. So we launched a program from that day. I was the last speaker of the day, and I said, you know what? This is only the beginning. So we need to start the committee where we have law enforcement, we have Black Lives Matters, we have the schools uh, involved together. We have a lot of nonprofit organizations also involved. Is how can we uh, build the bridge between law enforcement and the community? So what we're doing now, we're having uh, a lot of law enforcement, sheriff, police, and DA office, by the way. Uh, volunteered, uh, they're gonna, we match them with kids in elementary schools at risk area, and uh, once a week they're gonna yeah. go have lunch, so they're gonna build that relationship. Okay, uh, all right, and and your business, uh, Great American Car Wash along uh, Blackstone Avenue, um, and it's along the quarter, they're not too far from Manchester Center, which as you know, um, they're refurbishing, they're upgrading, um, BRT is, I guess, uh, is it is it operational now? A BRT along Blackstone or no? What's BRT? Bus Rapid Transit. Oh no, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Okay, so so um, not much time left. But how is Blackstone uh, Avenue okay. improved? So beginning of the year, I went to Chief Dyer, and and I was so frustrated. I said, you know what? I'm selling my business over here. I need to move because of the area is very bad. Got two minutes left. And and he promised me, said the area is going to be cleaned. So to make a long story short, uh, Captain Cooley, that's uh, on, in Manchester yeah, Center, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Chief Dyer, they called uh, Code Enforcer Richard Salinas, mm -hmm. uh, and he came ahead to clean the area. So if you walk uh, between uh, Shield and Ashland today, okay. uh, you don't see any prostitutions, you don't see any homeless people, and the streets are very, very, As very clean. When? As of when? As of a uh, couple months ago. Okay. So, How so, did they clean it up? Uh, okay, so we, we created an association. And I'm president of the association. It's called the uh, Central uh, Blackstone Avenue Area Merchant Association. Right. Uh, and uh, we meet on a weekly basis, which we meet every Thursday tomorrow. All right. Okay. Let's. Uh, how much time left? Two minutes. Okay. So. So. Hang on, caller. So uh, we have a mental health uh, on Saginaw and Blackstone. Okay. Three times a week, they get volunteers and they walk the whole street on Blackstone and they clean the area. Okay. All right, caller, um, I've got about a minute left. I'm going to make you late, uh, make a comment for about 15 seconds. Go ahead. Okay, real quick. I agree in all the things he has said as far as people needing to learn how to deal with their money. All of that is really good financial sense. Uh, but when you're talking about having the schools teach all these other things, new things, the problem is, there wasn't anything wrong with our education long ago. The problem is we keep thinking that we need something better and better, and then and in the end, I think we have lost touch of what the children really need. Okay, thank you very much. That's a good point. And actually, that was going through my head too, although I didn't say it. But this young lady here that called in, excellent point on education. How come there was nothing wrong with it years ago, and now all of a sudden there's something wrong with it? There was nothing wrong with the phone system we had 150 years ago. There's nothing wrong with the Nobody transportation. Nobody was complaining about education in the 60s or okay. 70s. Because that, that was the right education at that time. But 150 years later, we are still teaching the kids the same way. Yeah, I've got 30 seconds. You so know, so, we're so going to have me, to leave it there. Okay, so let me say. Uh, uh, as I, mean, an immigrant, I don't want to get cut off. Okay, as an immigrant coming over here, immigrants are five times more likely today to be successful in the United States. Why? Because they learn right. we do whatever it takes to succeed in America. And this is what we need to teach our kids go. over here too. A.J. Rasamni, come back. Owner of Great American Car Wash. Okay, Gain the Unfair Advantage. That's his book. See you tomorrow with Doug Vagum. We'll talk about that potential strike. See you then. Thank you.